Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. This is Aman here and I am a data scientist. In this particular video, I'll walk you through the implementation of Gradient Boost in Python. I'll walk you through step-by-step -step process of how to build a Gradient Boost model and how to improve the model. So just ensure to watch the video till end. So guys, the step one is importing the necessary packages. So what I'm doing here is I'm importing Gradient Boost Regressor which comes from, of course, sklearn.ensemble. And I'm importing NumPy, I'm importing Pandas, I'm importing trend test split, and then some of the matrices which I will need, like mean square error, R square. And if you see, I'm importing a data set from sklearn package itself. The name of the data is Boston. So this data is basically a Boston housing data. I'm just going to show you what is the data in a bit. So I'm just running this package block. So I imported all the packages. Now I'm going here and I'm doing some data preparation. So in data preparation, I'm just loading the Boston data set. If you see here, I say load underscore Boston. And then I say PD dot data from Boston dot data columns is equal to Boston dot feature names, which means load the Boston data and assign the column names as Boston dot feature names. Okay, that will come in the variable X. So what is in variable X? Let's see here. So variable X looks like this. So variable X is basically a data frame which has some columns like CRIM, ZN, Indus. So what are these columns basically? As I told, this data is a housing data of Boston. Okay, so CRIM says per capital crime rate by town. ZN Sage proportion of residential land zone for lots over 25k square feet. And similarly, there are other features like NOx stands for nitric oxide concentration, INDUS stands for proportion of non retail business acres, RM stands for average number of rooms per dwelling in the house. So, all these are part of the data. What is the target column here, or what is the dependent column here? The dependent column I have kept in Y and y is pd.series boston.target okay so what is in y let's see so y looks like this okay so i am printing 10 records here it looks like this so what is this y let's see in the data dictionary y is this last column median value of the owner occupied house is in thousand dollars which means the first record the first house median value is 21.6 the second is 34.6 so this is what we are intending to predict okay now i go ahead and i break the data into test and train so this is a special standard you know process that we do in all the algorithms so x train and y training data and x test and y test are test data okay now let's go ahead and fit a gradient boosting regressor model on this so if you see here i had already explained about gradient boosting in my last video the link for which is right here on the screen you can go ahead and watch that video so it's a boosting algorithm basically and it needs some of the input so i'm saying maximum depth is equal to tree which means two which means of the tree the maximum depth should be two number of estimators is equal to three which means take three trees so it's a boosting algorithm hence multiple trees will be taken i am saying take three trees learning rate is equal to one which is the default rate here so these are the default parameters with which I'm running the first iteration of the model. So let me create this model object and then I'm going ahead and I'm running gradient regressor dot fit X train and Y train, which means fit the gradient, uh, gradient descent regressor on X train and Y train. Once that fitting happens, then I have the model here. With that model, I am doing the prediction. So model dot predict X underscore test. So that is what I'm doing in this code block. Now I have the predicted value and I have the actual values. So I can very well see the R square of the model. So here R square of the model is coming close to 77%. Okay. Remember guys, this 77% has come without any efforts we have given in this model as of now. We have just set some of the parameters here, you know, randomly and we are getting this 77% accuracy. This is the beauty of the boosting algorithms. Okay, so the algorithms tries to minimize the error. So I had explained in detail in my theoretical video how the errors are minimized in boosting models. Okay, so this is how the boosting model works internally. Moving ahead, we also have something called feature importance in boosting model or gradient boost. 
so don't worry about these parts these are basically plotting parameters so don't worry much about these the important thing here is i am calling model dot feature underscore importances so what this gives us is this gives us which of these features are more important for my model okay so if we see this chart here we can see that rm and lstat and crim are more important variables here so let's come here and see if these things make sense rm what is rm so rm is average number of rooms per dwelling so obviously number of rooms in a house decide the price of the room hence that ma that makes sense lstat what is lstat so lstat is percentage of lower status of the population so this also seems to be a meaningful column okay and then third one was crime so crime you know per capita crime rate by town so this is also seeming to be an important variable for you know house price in that particular town so up to here well and good okay now we are able to see that these variables are important but if if is there a way that we can improve the accuracy of the model so right now we are at 77.8% so what i am going to do is i am going to tune some hyperparameters so what is this hyperparameter tuning is here if you see i have given randomly maximum depth to number of estimator 3 and these things right we do not know what should be the optimal number of parameters for this particular data what we should do is we should tune the hyperparameter so that the model gives the best performance how to do that let's come here so if you see i am importing sql learn dot model selection import grid search cv so this is a function that the use of this function is it will take inputs and give us the best parameter for our data so here i am creating an object lr in that object i am creating two keys one is learning rate another is number of estimators learning rate i am giving multiple values 0.15 0.1 0.10 0.05 .1, 0 .0 .0 and similarly in number of estimators and then i am saying grid search cv build a gradient boost regressor take these parameters so param grid is equal to lr and scoring is equal to r square what is the meaning of this command is take all these combinations of these two inputs which means run algorithm once with learning rate 0.15 and number of estimators 100 next iteration run the model with learning rate 0.15 and number of estimators 150 next iteration 0.15 200 and similarly run all the combinations 0.1 with all these 0.10 with all these so these two are basically same only so whatever so these uh, take all these values and run the multiple combinations okay and then i am saying tuning dot fit x train y train and give me the best parameter so when i run this model here or run this grid search what is happening is this part is running now all those combinations are being run so all these will be taken one by one and run with all these one by one okay and what is the output we are getting is learning rate 0.15 and number of estimators is 200 that is the best for this data so it is giving us one combination from the given combination now we can of course increase the numbers here and you know make it bigger to give more options to grid search but out of these options grid search is saying us learning rate 0.15 and number of estimators 200 means 200 trees and 0.15 learning gives us the best model with r square 84% so this is a huge improvement so we started from 78% 77.8% and now we are at 84% okay so this is the you know how to do the hyperparameter tuning in gradient boost of course we can do more hyperparameter tuning like what should be the maximum depth of the tree what should be the split criteria like gini entropy what should be the minimum number of leaf nodes etc so there are lot of you know parameters which can be tuned but the process remains same what are the pros and cons of gradient boost so obviously it's a boosting algorithm hence it attributely corrects the mistake of the weak learner and improves accuracy by combining weak learners obviously so all the weak learners will be combined to make a strong learner which i was explaining in my theory video and in most of the cases you will see that gradient boost gives a better accuracy as compared to single model so these two are you know plus part of gradient boost model so what are the downsides of gradient boost model 
just now you saw i was running with four five combinations and it was taking some time similarly if you want to you know tune your hyperparameters with more inputs then this will be space complexity will be high and time complexity will be high and obviously we do not know that for which data what hyperparameters input we should give for tuning also so there is no you know fixed range or fixed rule that 100 trees will do better on this data 200 trees will do better on this data there is nothing like that so it's a try and error kind of thing so we have to try with different combinations and you know come to the best parameter so hyperparameter tuning is a tricky part in this algorithm okay so i hope you have understood the theory as well as practical implementation of gradient boost if you have any questions on theory part or practical part don't hesitate to drop me a comment i'll definitely respond to you i'll see you all in the next video with another interesting topic till then take care